As the Warriors got off to a terrifyingly good start in their preseason, first preseason game against the Clippers, uh, the idea or the concept of positionless basketball again started to be debated. Uh, and so I saw a debate amongst uh, you know youth or high school coaches about the merits uh, of positionless basketball. And I think the argument tends to miss an essential point. Uh, so the, those arguing against positionless basketball were arguing that you know, you can't put a really short player in the post, and you can't put a tall player who can't dribble on the perimeter. So, of course, there's positions, you know, your tall player is going to be a center, your little player is going to be a guard, and that's just the way things work. Um, and for convention's sake, we tend to use positions. Even the Warriors, you know, use the nomenclature of a position. Uh, but positions don't really tell us anything. Uh, generally speaking... Uh, when you give somebody a position, you're simply telling them who they're going to guard on the other team. How they play within your offense is where you, uh, you know, tell them to go or, or you know, design for them to be based on their skill set. And so I think that's the difference that we need to uh, look at. When we think of positions, we tend to pigeonhole people into positions based on size. Um, when we think about, you know, the idea of positionless basketball, we're thinking more about utilizing skill sets. So it doesn't matter if the player is short, if they can play in the post and score in the post, why not put them in the post? If the player is, uh, you know, tall, but it can shoot threes like a Dirk Nowitzki or a Porzingis, why try to make them, you know, into a center, you know, or have them, you know, only play close to the basket? Uh, so. The idea is, is using players based on their skill set and not predetermining what skills that they should have because of, uh, you know, their size. Um, and so typically speaking, most matchups are going to be fairly even in size. So if I'm the shortest player on my team, I'm generally going to be defended by the shortest player on the other team. Therefore, I probably can post up because size wise, uh, you know, I may not be at a disadvantage. Um, and if they want to put then their biggest player on me because I'm staying close to the basket, well then theoretically that should open up uh, you know a, a bigger, taller player on my team to be defended by somebody shorter. Um, and so now maybe I can take the bigger player away from the basket, and now we can use the mismatch of having their smaller defender on our taller, you know, offensive player. Uh, but Again, the idea of positionless basketball is more about philosophy and utilizing players and utilizing skill sets and not just limiting players to only doing certain things because of some uh, you know, predetermined position designation. Uh, and you know, at the NBA level, it's fine. You know, use position uh, descriptions. Don't call everybody a guard. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but at the youth level, I actually think positionless basketball is important uh, because you don't want to pigeonhole players into a position too early because that tall-ish player at 10, 11, 12 years old may be close to fully grown. And if he's only playing you know, close to the basket and isn't allowed to dribble the ball, isn't allowed to shoot from outside the key, well, his career is going to be shortened because as everybody passes him in height, he's not going to have the skill set to move to the perimeter. Uh, and you, you've seen this for generations with players and players. One of my best friends growing up, uh, you know, basically got to junior varsity basketball. He's probably one of the better, if not the best player on our junior varsity basketball team, but he was only 5'10", and he was our power forward. Uh, so moving to the varsity level, there weren't a lot of options for him. He had an okay shot, but, uh, you know, and could handle the ball competently, but he certainly wasn't a guard. He was good because he was good around the basket, he could use his body, etc. And it's tough to transition to be a 5'10", you know, shooting guard or 5'10 point guard when you've played as a back to the basket post player for your entire career. You know, I trained another player that I tried to, uh, he was 10 years old and I was trying to get him to work on, you know, moving his shooting range further from the basket and working on his ball handling ability. Uh, but he told me that he only wanted to practice close to the basket because his coach told him he's only allowed to shoot close to the basket inside the key and he wasn't allowed to dribble. Uh, and this was a 10 year old and it was a 10 year old who was about an inch shorter than his father. Uh, so, and he was only about five, seven, five, eight. 
So he was probably close to fully grown. Um, you know, was probably never going to get past 5'10", uh, you know, in his adult height. Uh, but we've already determined that he can only play basketball as long as he's tall enough to be a post player. Um, because those are the only skills that he was allowed to practice and develop and use in games. Um, and so instead, I think at the youth level especially, we need to embrace this idea of positionless basketball and allow all players to develop all skills. And that doesn't mean that uh, in a game, every player is allowed to shoot any shot they want or every player is allowed to dribble whenever they want. Um, you can still have whatever system you want to use, um, you know, and determine, you know, have one player act as a primary ball handler, so on and so forth. But you're empowering players and enabling players to learn the skills through practice. And then as they grow in competence, hopefully allowing them to then use those skills in games as well. Because when you watch teams play, the hardest teams to defend now are the ones that whoever gets the rebound, whether it's the point guard or the center, can take off with the dribble and start to advance the ball down court, as opposed to holding the ball, waiting, handing the ball off to the point guard and allowing the point guard to bring the ball up, because that's going to be slower. So if you can immediately rebound and bust out with whoever gets that rebound and everybody else is filling lanes, you have a better opportunity to get the ball down the court quicker. You know, if you're playing with a shot clock, now you're into your offense earlier in the shot clock. Um, and you put more pressure on the defense to sprint back and to find uh, people to match up. Because if you have the center dribbling up the court, well, now your center has to make the decision. Are they running uh, to the basket to protect the basket? Or are they going to now be the one that comes up to stop the ball at half court because the offensive center is dribbling? That puts pressure on the defense. And so when you have five players who possess all of the skills, now you can put more pressure on the defense. And ultimately, that leads to a more successful team. Uh, so again, you know, whatever the arguments want to be at the NBA of what positionless basketball means and whether or not, you know, Kevin Durant's a power forward or a small forward or a shooting guard, you know, or if Steph Curry's a combo guard or a point guard, um, that's basically semantics. Uh, you know, they possess all of the skills. And at the youth level, that's what we should be striving to develop, is not pigeonholing a player into a certain position where they're only allowed to utilize a certain skill, but trying to get them to develop all skills and allow players then, once they show some competence, to use all of their skills uh, during their games.